All right, thank you for being here. So just quickly in 10 minutes, normally it takes an hour, so uh, we'll go quite quick. Uh, we're a mid-tier African gold producer solely focused in West Africa. Uh, in fact, in three countries and mainly French-speaking West Africa. So two assets in both, uh, in all three, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Ivory Coast. Um, just a bit on the region. Uh, this, in fact, is actually an economic a union in, in, in West Africa, you have the same currency, the same central bank, and fiscal policies that tend to be fairly well aligned, uh, which is really why we're focused in this area, French-speaking West Africa, with a French management team and an operating team based in-country uh, in uh, Abidjan. So these were the strategic objectives that were set in 2016 uh, on the left hand here. Uh, those are the objectives for 2019. Uh, when the new management stepped in at the end of 2015, we set these objectives, so to produce 800,000 ounces at least, um, and most importantly, below 800 all in sustaining costs and above 10-year mine life, uh, because we felt that if you have these metrics, you create a sustainable business where you're able to pay dividends, reinvest into the business, into projects and exploration. Uh, these seem like a stretch about three years ago. Uh, over the last two quarters, we've already we're already producing under $800 per ounce, and we're well on track to be 900,000 ounces per year uh, by the end of next year with the ETCL project coming on board. <clears throat> to attain this strategy, we basically focused on four pillars, be good operators, develop projects, unlock exploration, and manage our portfolio. Uh, as you'll see later, we've been selling assets that were not core uh, and purchasing some other assets, namely to fill our project pipeline. As I mentioned, our operating team is in West Africa, so we're not managing projects based out of Vancouver or based out of Perth. We're in country and a couple of hours away from each of our operations. Safety, uh, it's always, always important. We like to uh, basically show our safety record because that shows how well the assets are, are being managed. A bit more details, you can see here we've been increasing production, lowering cost, but most importantly, increasing our all-in margin and extending our mine lives. Project Pipeline, uh, we have an in-house construction team, uh, which we like to keep busy. They've built seven projects on time on budget in the last 13 years, uh, all in West Africa. Hyundai was put in production in November of last year, again, on time and below budget. ET is currently in construction. It started in September last year, and it's expected to be put into production by mid-year next year. Uh, we're now working on Kalana as well. We expect an updated resource by mid-year updated study by the end of the year and to launch this construction sometime next year. This bridges the gap between uh, being able to source our next project uh, organically through exploration and we have a number of projects that we're working on. A word on each of the projects, uh, ET, uh, Hyundai is no longer a project, it's now our flagship mine. It's running very well compared to the uh, uh, study <coughs> metrics. Uh, most importantly, the plant is running 20% above nameplate capacity. Uh, in Q1, all in cash costs were 430, so very low. Uh, we're now turned to exploration. You can see here that the mine life has you know, four good years and then production drops off. Uh, about uh, 10 days ago, we announced three discoveries at Hyundai, so we now expect to be able to maintain at least 10 years of good production, so at least 250,000 ounces per year over 10 years. ET, that's the one we're building now. Uh, again, when you take a look at the metrics, you know it has 20% uh, IRR, at least at $1,000 good gold price, uh, 3 million ounces of reserves. Mine life stretches over 14 years, but already has, four, uh, already has 10 good years of production. And again, the goal with the new discoveries that we made is to maintain this 250,000 ounces per year plateau. So between Hyundai and ET, you'll have basically half a million ounces, both producing below 600. A few pictures here, in essence of time, I'll have to go quick. Uh, Kalana is the project we purchased last year. Uh, we purchased it for 0.3 times now. Uh, we're now working on optimizing the study. Uh, rather than having a 17-year mine life, we're targeting more like a 10-year mine life, but at a production profile above 150,000 ounces per year. We did something a bit unusual in 2016. Uh, we figured that if you're operating, you're accountable for your production and your costs. If you're building, you're accountable for your timelines and capex. But in this industry, if you're exploring, you're just accountable to spend money. 
so we went out in 2016 and we announced our five-year exploration program uh, with our targets. So we're, overall, we're expecting to discover between 10 to 15 million ounces uh, spread out across our different assets, which two, with two-thirds of that basically focused on ET and Hyundai. And we started to shade in what we had, what we found in the last uh, 18 months. So last year, the main focus was on ET because we had to size the plant. We added 1.5 million ounces. So rather than building a 3 million ton per annum plant based on the feasibility study, we actually built a 4 million ton per annum plant. And now the focus is on Hyundai because it went into production late last year. Uh, and as we saw before, there's quite a bit of potential there. Can spend hours talking about this slide, but this really explains what we've done with the business in about two years. On the left-hand side is the portfolio we had uh, back at the end of 2015, and on the right-hand side is the current portfolio. Bottom axis is mine life, and left-hand axis is all in cash costs. So really, that's the two metrics that are important for us. If we start on the left-hand side, Yuga, the small orange bubble, we sold that one in 2016. We sold Nanzima last year, both because they were short mine life and high cost. Looking at the right-hand side, ET, uh, he pleach, uh, we're now building the CIL, so that's going to fit nicely into the bottom right box. We built Hyundai. We bought Karma, which at the time was seven year mine life. We've extended that to 10 years. And now we're, uh, last year we updated, in fact, we, um, we fixed the uh, front end of the plant. So rather than being capped at 3 million tons, we're now on a run rate of almost 5 million tons per annum. So we should see costs coming down. The other one is, that fits into this box is uh, Kalana, which as I mentioned, we purchased last year and are not working on the updated feasibility study. The one that doesn't fit into the box is Tabakoto. Uh, as you can maybe read, it's very small. Uh, we expect to make a strategic decision on this uh, sometime this year. Uh, essentially, we, we don't believe this one is core anymore. So it's nice to talk about projects and exploration, but how is this all funded? Uh, as you can see here, we're, we have strong liquidity sources, 424 million, including our undrawn RCF and cash position. On top of that, you still have some proceeds coming in from the Nanzima sale. Equipment financing at ET, uh, so these two pieces alone make us well-funded for uh, the ET project, and on top of that, we're, we're obviously generating quite a bit of cash. <clears throat> so, as you would have guessed, we're, we're trying to build a sustainable company, so we're trying to be strong on the three aspects of the business. So to have a core uh, producing portfolio, which we try to actively manage. As you can see here, you know, Hyundai came into production and we sold uh, Nanzima. We believe that we can manage you know, six to seven assets in this region eff uh, efficiently without adding more uh, GNA cost. We're now building uh, ET. We have Kalana coming up next, and what we published late last year was the Greenfields Exploration Potential, which is uh, all the uh, bubbles you see on the left-hand side. So the goal this year, 40% uh, of our exploration budget is being directed towards Greenfields Exploration, uh, with the goal of being able to source the next project organically. Uh, there's a few that have uh, some historical resources there. Feteco is the most advanced. It's the one at the bottom that you see there. It's in Ivory Coast. Uh, it used to belong to uh, La Mancha, and at the time there was already 40, uh, about 400,000 ounces at three grams. So thank you for your time, on time, on budget. <laughs> Excellent, thank you very much.